Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to What's Occurring, Session 6. Um, I've got my my um, my comrade in arms. I was I, I wasn't sure what to call you then, Jack. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I got I got to be mindful that this. Things. <laughs> this is absolutely gone out to everybody across the planet because it's on both of our YouTube channels and on LinkedIn and on various other social media. So, yeah, my comrade in arms. I think I'll keep it to that. <laughs> uh, that's, so, that's good. Welcome back, Jack. Um, I know you missed the last one because you were feeling unwell, but um, you seem to be tip top today. I'm um, back, back in full force now. Yeah. <laughs> um, today we're going to look a little bit um, slightly differently in terms of what, what, what we're going to what we're going to chat about. So what we've done in the initial two two sessions was um, was interview each other. I think we did emotional intelligence on day one. Mm -hmm. We did commercial awareness and the finance stuff on day two, which sort of I interviewed you, you interviewed me, and then we brought a couple okay. of guests on. So we've had Rob, Rob Moon. Um, we've had him do his top 10 of his sales, um, his sales essentials. Um, I know Rob has just posted something on LinkedIn as well with that. So that's sort of free for everybody to see. Um, and obviously last week then we got, um, uh, sorry, this week then we got Julian John, who was an old, who was an old, he's uh, we're, we're, we're from the Taft Trails, as we call it, down in, uh, down in West West Wales. Yeah, both um, in your pink shirts. In both of us in our pink shirts, yeah, yeah. Um, I thought I'd better put a blue one on today, just in case they get everybody probably wondering. God, I, think, I think you would look lovely in orange. I don't know if I've got any orange, Jack. That's just something I need to look in. Um, ah, okay. I, yeah, it's an interesting one. Have I got anything orange in my cup, in my in my wardrobe? Because um, at the minute, that's next on the agenda. I think everybody's just recently gone through, sort of, uh, a, a, making a top ten or twenty or thirty or forty list of what things they can do during this this COVID thing. So, um, yeah, and for me, because I'm um, I'm a really visual person, so colour can affect my mood and you know I've been open and honest on, on LinkedIn recently about you know having certain anxieties and worries about different things so so yeah this morning when I got up I just thought you know how can I lift my mood so rather than choosing black or, or navy, dark, dark I got a navy, or navy <laughs> I've gone for a nice bright orange with flowers <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Works for me. looking great as well yeah it's good to have you back though Jack it was uh, it was odd do uh, um, not not doing the conversation with Julian and, and going through the inclusivity, but um, yeah, I think it's it's um, um, it it needed the female touch just to uh, just to sort of keep us <laughs> keep us on track. <laughs> <laughs> so today, plan of attack, we're going to talk a little bit around coaching. We Big passion of both of us, yeah. Um, without a shadow of a doubt, um, I guess to get get things started. What what's what's been your experience when um, you know you were um, working for a different different organisations um, during your career? What was your experience of, of coaching? Well, that's an interesting one because I mean I share these anecdotes with with um, and I did a coaching session yesterday morning um, at three thirty a.m. I hasten to add, um, which God it absolutely flagged me last night. But that, that is commitment. Oh, stupidity. Yeah, I wish some clients wouldn't live in Australia. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if it's good or not. All I can say is the coffee was flowing. Uh, but yeah, I mean, when I look, when I look back, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit, li little bit like you in terms of um, understanding the concepts of coaching and, and, and making it about the person as opposed to you. Um, mm -hmm. Training is a lot and more to do with you know getting the message across and you creating that awareness, you creating that environment, that culture, mm -hmm. and um, and then you you know you pick your top your top five objectives and then you work for them in a structured manner. So training is 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 a more two way process, but it's you know it's favoured more towards the the, the trainer as such because it's mm -hmm. they've come there to listen and to learn. Yeah. Um, you bring up the best in them, but you you set yeah. objectives, etc. And I don't think in all my in all my um, in, in in my early part of my career specifically, then I don't think I was ever I don't think I was ever really coached um, not to the way that I would do it with a customer now with a, with 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 a client now. Yeah, um, my, my experience was as, it was the same back in my early career. Can I ever remember having regular coaching with either a, a coach or with my manager? Um, 
you know, and I and I know we've been out giving away our ages. <laughs> what? <laughs> So coaching in the early days of our career might not have been the norm. It might not have been, you know, in, in people's mindsets that, you know, the benefits that coaching can bring. Um, but I guess more so later in, in my career, I noticed with some organizations I worked in, that they were really trying hard to develop a coaching culture has that been your, your experience yeah no nice word apt word that was on the tip of my tongue around culture so we talk about were we coach did we coach was my management strategy style and structure um with a coaching methodology which is or was it directive so what, what in terms of looking at um um just just the way it was was I directive or was I non-directive? So mm -hmm. was I was I was I was I more telling? Probably yeah, a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, yeah, yeah, me too. And I know when we talk about um, and I've recently done um, uh, recently did a, a manager and a leader as part of a um, a leadership management program, and we talked specifically in that around um, around bringing the best of the people and and talking about our perfect balances for. For a manager, for a leader, to 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 bring up best in people. So you be, you know, you be autocratic. You make a decision when you need to, mm -hmm. and you then think about how participative you are. So you bring in, you bring in that perspective. I'm going to roll my sleeves up, and I'm going to get in this with you now. So we get the ball rolling with this, and then mm -hmm. that level of trust, that empowerment, and that directive of or non-directive perspective, then you take a step back and use that mm -hmm. French word, which is laissez-faire, where, mm -hmm. I mean, I know the direct translation is something like bury your head in the sand, but it isn't. It yeah. is that, that allowance, right? I've given you, yeah. I've given you the, you know, I've, I've made a decision because I have to, because I'm the, I'm the manager mm -hmm. in terms of the strategy we've got, but I'm then giving you that opportunity to be able to go for it yourself but, and then you come to me with yeah, things so yeah. um, but I found um, I don't know if you can relate to this I have found certainly when I've been speaking to managers um, you know certainly in do, doing leadership pro program programs as you have that you know the majority of managers I think are self-aware and will be open and honest within the training environment and will outwardly say I absolutely get the importance of trusting my team, empowering my team to make decisions, but I struggle with it because I, I've got to give up an element of control. And that's not easy for a lot of people to do. Is, is, have you experienced the same? Have other managers said the same to you? Completely, and you can witness it. You can witness it. And, uh, you know, working with lots of managers over the years, and just to bring some stuff that we covered off on your on our first session with most intelligence, but that relationship, that relationship awareness, and you can, you can gauge it when when you work for a team where they and, and you work for a manager and you work for a and, and, and are they leaders? Then, then that's another question. I think that's a, that's a side question in terms of which we'll probably cover off in the next couple of weeks anyway, as we delve a little bit more deeper and get a little bit more granular with this stuff. Um, and I think. Knowing and, and and you're the most intelligent, your gut instinct knows that you're gonna have to report in, you're gonna have they're gonna be wanting, wanting uh, sort of a lot more progress reports on these things. Um, and they and they give you give you a task and ask you your ask you your opinion. And it's a little bit what I what I what we spoke about, um, when we listened to respond, and I posted something on LinkedIn mm -hmm. last week, I think it was. Do we listen to hear? Do we listen to respond? And and, and that I that that ideology that. A coach is meant to bring the best out of you, but then if they are giving you those directive perspectives, but asking you a question, but not caring what your answer is. So it's, mm -hmm. do you get where I come from? Yeah, it's, yeah, absolutely, I do. You know, the dynamic in the conversation is I'm asking you a question. Do I care what you're saying to me or am I doing it just to tick a box that I've asked you and then I'm just going to tell you? So mm -hmm. I'm trying to make you think that I'm non-directive where I'm listening <laughs> to understand, I'm reflecting on what you say, but I don't care. All I'm doing is I'm going to tell you what I want. Yeah. Uh, there's yeah. certainly an element of that, but also I think one of the hardest things when you're coaching um, you know, an individual is, is getting comfortable with silence. 
because if you've asked a really thought provoking question, it's only right that you give that person the time to think about it in terms of their response. But if you're already then thinking as they're responding to you, you're thinking, right, what's my next question <laughs> gonna be? Um, you know, coaching isn't a race, is it? You know, a really effective coaching conversation is you are giving each other time and space not only to respond to the, the person's question, but also if you're the one that's doing the coaching, to give yourself time to think about what would be the most effective question, next question to ask them, and not feeling that I've got to have that question ready prepared. Or in, or in, in your case, I've got to have the, the tell <laughs> ready, ready to prepare that you mentioned. Um, um. I mean, I go into coaching sessions, I familiarise myself, certainly on first ones, I go in with a blank blank sheet. Mm -hmm. um, and if I'm honest, the first one is normally about getting to know each other. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I remember asking a, um, um, a professional rugby player, well, actually, I remember asking a, a professional football player, I'll, 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 I'll change this because um, it was quite a unique one with the rugby player because they, get, they, they, they were having their own personal coach on aspects of their game. But I remember a couple of years ago, I, um, I did a, a stint with a company. I, was, uh, um, I, did, um, um, I did some coaching with a company. Then I ended up do, uh, going in and put, becoming the operational director for a while just to put some operational control in place. It was only six months, you probably remember, a couple of years ago. And it was only one day, uh, one day a week I was working. But I remember coaching one of the guys, and he was an ex-professional football player. And I asked him a question. Um, and you know, one of our first ever sessions, when was the last, and bear in mind, you're an ex-professional football player, when was the last time, or have you ever been coached? And then he said, well, yeah, I have. And he went through blah, 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 blah. I said, right, explain and drill that down to me, exactly what was, what was said to you, how it was said to you, what, what you were doing. And when we actually got to the, 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 the crux of it, his coach was actually technically deemed or, or, or technically in our world would be classed as a trainer because he was mm -hmm. told, come to the training, mm -hmm. you do this, do that, you go off and, and, and your nutrition is looked after, your, you know, your fitness levels and all the moves and everything was set out for them and they practice them and practice them and practice them until they got it perfect mm -hmm. and then they came off the paddock. And, and, and that's made me think about a scenario when I was working in the um, Tesco engagement centre and, and I will give a lot of credit here to Tes Tesco, the three and a half years that I was a leadership trainer there and coach, they really put positive things and really tried to, to, to develop a coaching culture within that centre. And I can absolutely say from the start, when I started there to when I, I, I left that organisation, the transformation in terms of it coming away from that directive approach and empowering people to make decisions and I'll be creative as well yeah. um you know I certainly witnessed that but going back to what you were just saying I remember a conversation a team leader came to me one day and said right you know I've just taken on on this this new team and you know I've mentioned coaching to them and you know I'm coming up against you know a, a great deal of negativity particularly from one particular person oh, that yes. doesn't want coaching doesn't see the need for coaching and I said What's this person's understanding of what coaching is? She said, I don't know. I said, I said, have you asked? So she said, no, actually, I haven't. So she went away and she sort of had a, a conversation. And this person's idea of coaching was, well, you as my manager are going to tell me what I'm doing wrong. You're going to tell me what I need to do and why I need to do it. You're going to do all the talking and I'm just going to sit there and go and have to say, yeah, OK, I'll, I'll do what you're asking me to do. That was their idea of what coaching was. Now, can you understand? I can certainly understand why a lot of people Im immediately thought, and, and, and I know the ILM have done some research on, on this, yeah, um, yeah. to show that in many organisations, although they have coaching, the coaching is focused on the underperformers. So it's seen as a remedial tool, Completely. not a tool to enhance and to achieve high performance. And so I can certainly understand why, in my experience in my career, coaching has had a really negative context to it because people were thinking, well, I'm only getting coaching because I'm doing something wrong. I'm going to get coaching and you as my manager are going to tell me what I need to do and how I need to do it. 
it's no wonder yeah. <laughs> with all that going on that there's a negativity to coaching. Whereas I see that uh, coaching bringing in the Welsh Welsh word again, which we mentioned we have mentioned before. I see it as being a supportive coach. Oh, absolutely. Because you are showing that person that you care about them. You're showing that, you know, your, your team that you, um, you know, recognize and trust and value their knowledge and experience and their ideas. And it's not all about you. It's not all about the great ideas that you've got and the way that you do things, but actually empowering people to do what's right for them in terms of their performance and um, their, their career enhancement and their potential. So for me, as I say, it is that support, that supportive coach. I think you mentioned that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring a little bit of a performance management in there just to use that as an example, because whenever, whenever performance management is brought in, it's that automatic perception that I've done something wrong. I'm not performing. I need, and, and, and it scares the heebie jeebies out of them. Yeah. But yet, if I, and, and just to bring the rugby player and the football player back into the equation again, if I went to a, 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 an elite sports athlete and said, I'm going to performance manage you, they would bite their hands off. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I know we've mentioned um, the, the Dan Carter, we've mentioned the, um, the Richie McCaw, and I've, and I've used lots of anecdotes from these because I'm a huge, huge rugby fan and a huge All Black fan mm -hmm. um, and have been since, God, the late 70s. And if you ask, if you go to a, an elite athlete saying a performance manager, they'll go, yes, yes. But if you go to someone who was working in an environment, a corporate environment, as, a, as mm -hmm. an example, or whether civil service, mm -hmm. um, or whether public sector or private sector or third sector, yeah, it doesn't matter, across the board. The moment you come in there and saying a performance manager, you, the fear of God comes in them because yeah. they're thinking, oh, you want me out, you want to get rid of me. Because, mm -hmm. but the irony is you don't perform as managed top performers because. Mm -hmm. And coming back to what you say, why are you coaching me? Because, and I, and, and obviously we knew what we were going to talk about today. So I'm, 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 I've made a little bit, a couple of notes from, from yesteryear, some of the coach, some of the coaching courses that I've delivered over the last God knows how long. And, um, and, and, and some of the stuff that I've come up with, I mean, one of them is it's a gimmick. It won't work. It doesn't te do anything for me. Mm -hmm. We do this go out and everything reverts to, so utilizing that, that perspective that you said, that you mentioned earlier, what is the culture? Coaching is about, correct me if I'm wrong, getting to the root cause of something mm -hmm. to be able to grow it. So you get to the seed. Yeah. You get to the seed, you water it, you nurture it, you nourish yeah. it, and you, yeah. and you watch that grow. And you see it overcome its barriers. So mm -hmm. how do we grow? Up? How do, my wife is, is, is and she raided Wyville on the weekend. I'll, I'll get that in there. <laughs> we have, we have uh, she bought a, a new rose for the garden. How, um, how long did she have to, to, to queue for? We, we, oh, oh. we did the same. It was about half an hour, I think. It was in all the sort of windy weather. <laughs> it was a bit of a zigzag. I don't think it was yes, half an hour, yes. but it was a fair, a fair, fair trek. And all to get Leonardo da Vinci Rose, just for the record. Um, and, um, but what Jane does, to see that thing grow, to see that, it gives, it, it's, you know, it's a pleasure, but it is quite a, it is quite a nice, as roses go, yeah, just for the record, yeah, I know she's going to be watching this, so I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, thumbs up, it looks lovely, <laughs> it, being a Welsh is a bit looks lush, um, <laughs> but then, but it's a gimmick, it won't work, that's the irony, but unless things are cultivated, unless the barriers are utilised, just to, just to bring mm -hmm. what Jane does with us, so Jane repots plants regularly, mm -hmm. she's continually changing soil, um, she weeds the top of it, so she gives it that environment, that perspective, that anything she does for that, it is for the greater good. Yeah, so she can see the, 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 the watering plants. Obviously, we've got a bit of rain at the moment, which... Oh, just a second, my, my phone is, is... That's fine, it's not me ringing you. It's going off. <laughs> that's go. fine. Just in case it's been picked up on the recording. I bet that's your parcel being delivered, Jack, so you've, <laughs> and your husband's outside, so you're hiding your phone, and yeah, it's... <laughs> <laughs> please, please do continue <laughs> <laughs> thank you so everything is and, and the other one was everything is okay why change and i'm just thinking you know um henry ford's one of his famous saying not the one that says you can have any color you want unless it's black um the other one was um if i'd have listened to people i'd have made faster horses and what henry ford did 
Um, he didn't invent the car, but he invented the mass production of the automobile. automobile uh, you know, the the, the car. He, he created the the factory. He created that 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 perspective where we're at now, where we've we've got cars in in uh, you know all over the world. Um, and I just think if everything was okay, why change? So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But sometimes you need to break things. What you do? To build it back up again, and the only way that you can do to that, move forward because if completely. you stay where, where you are, all your competitors are, are going to leave you behind. You yeah, know, completely. No matter what sector you're you're in, you've got competition. You know, and as a, you know, in terms of of the you know the benefits of of coaching, I know there's been so many studies out there that all show positive benefits what are some of the benefits that you've experienced or that you know you're, you're aware of um, well what i've seen is um and i did a i did a program in cambridge i think i'm trying to think when it was uh, because i don't know this 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 2020 is really really discombobulated me and i love that word i've got to get that <laughs> it's, a, it's a fantastic word not but as John, good as coach, a, but it's a good word <laughs> it's not as good as coaching it's not as good as lush but it is a good word it's a very very good word discombobulated me me. But I'm going back probably about January time when I finished the program with a company in Cambridge and it was a legal company, and we we put the bite size uh, sprints as I'm, I'm you know what I call them now with sprints which I've got advertised on, on the website and on an event right, and these are these are um, um, uh, specifically tailored for um, directors and, and and sort of decision makers um, of of organisations that and, and but anyway, and what we did was were, were the more you could see the light bulbs. And we did it as a group coach, so we got we had four of them in the room, um, and we did it as a collective. And what we were then doing is getting that synergy, that that engagement, and these are the things that we're working on individually. And then we were breaking down each of them, obviously from a divisional perspective. Yeah. They all had, I think, one of them was finance, HR, uh, and recruitment. One of them was operational, and one was the CEO of the company. Then who had and the over of everything, and the insistence of the CEO was that everybody understood what everybody else was doing so they could see that level of connection and one of the biggest things that that um and i'm i'm a huge fan of of of, of um sort of uh, uh nurturing this is the communication is how we nurture the communication and one and, 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 and some of the root causes and what we mentioned earlier is about how we enhance that level of communication and get everybody on board with the same yeah. message mm -hmm. um, so everybody is aligned so we haven't got any disparities of messages or, you know, the vision, mission and the goal of the business is for the next three years to do this. But if we've got everybody on, on, on different hymn sheets, you know, so if we go into a congregation, into my, into my, my mother's old chapel and, and everybody else gets different hymn sheets or different songs and then the organist is playing a totally different song and everybody, it's not going to make any sense. Absolutely. Um, that's a, probably, a, it's a, that's my experience. So, but when the light bulb hits, and they start to understand that these are the things that they need. Then the culture, you're bringing them back to that word yeah. that you mentioned earlier, yeah. that then has to filter into the business itself. And every, but it, it needs then time to nurture. So I can change the soil like my wife's done with the, uh, yeah. the, the Leonardo da Vinci rose. But then you have, to, you have to water it. You have to nurture it. You have to look after it. Yeah, absolutely. The laser fair. Take a step back and think, right, let's see what it look, what it, see, see how it goes. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, what, what's your experience? I mean, you know, my, my sort of last main employer really was, was the Tesco Centre. But, you know, I, yes, I know there's lots of studies out there and I could sit here and I could reel off what, you know, what they are. But for me, it's more about experience. You know, I, I don't need other people to tell me that coaching can benefit organisations through employee engagement. You know, the staff retention um, can benefit because people will want to stay in an organisation much longer if they feel val valued and they're coached rather than the directive approach yep. and you know whether you're in sales or whether you're in customer service the customer ultimately gets a better service and a better product because all employees within the organization that receive the coaching recognize when there's a problem that needs to be fixed and they know what to do in order to fix it. They don't need to be told by somebody. They've developed their problem solving and their decision making skills because they've been coached. Yeah. And I saw that within the Tesco Centre. I mean, they used to um, ring fence their coaching. 
So ensuring that even during busy times, there was still a certain element of coaching happening. Yeah. They ensured everybody received coaching. It wasn't seen as a remedial tool. It was recognized and even our best performance can enhance what they do, do already. Um, the employee satisfaction results, they mm. all increased dramatically over that three year period. Mm. And ultimately customer satisfaction went up and complaints reduced. And I saw that in a period of, of three years. So when, oh, I'm, when, so when, I, when I read the research, I can say, yeah, absolutely, I've experienced it. I can agree with it. And, you know, I, as I said, I mentioned the ILM earlier, and just because of, you know, my age, I need to write things down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but we are similar ILM, age. You can't be saying things like that now, right? I, I absolutely can. I can say it, but you can't. <laughs> Um, so the ILM did, did, a, did um, a study and 80% of the companies that were surveyed um, said they use coaching. Yeah. Which is, yeah, fantastic. But only half of those companies made it, made it across the board. So mm. made it available to everybody. And 85% of the organisation said that coaching was really aimed at management level. And in a, most cases, it was used as a as a remedial to manage poor performance. Completely. You know, and, and so when I started reading that research, I thought, oh, fantastic, 80% of organizations are using coaching. But if you're not using it as, as, a, as, a, as I say, that supportive mechanism with everybody, so recognizing that there's no one person in the organization that can't benefit from coaching. I am with you on that. It's a key. And I'm with you on that. And I've written two words down in front of me now. Um, and I've written formal and I've written informal. And similarly to what you said, there's, there's, there, is a, there is a fear factor with, with people in, in, a, in a hierarchy perspective, thinking that they can't be coached by someone um, and, and listen and coach up sideways yeah, and coach yeah, down. Yeah. And, and there is too much emphasis on that it has to be a structured approach. Mm -hmm. Where I've, I I I used to find that uh, people that I've coached over the last twenty thirty nearly thirty years actually God I'm sure my age now, but over the last all of that time is that um, I I've always found that why does it have to be formalised in terms of what I'm what I mean is that when 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 a need arises then then adapt then adopt that coaching model adopt mm -hmm. that process. And, 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 and utilize that smart objective. So, you know, drill down to what needs to be, you know, and maybe look at the one, two, three, look at it in terms of the priority when you get into that and, and look at what that, what that potential is, is needed, what that outcome is needed. Mm -hmm. And then think about which is the most important in, in terms of strategy, in terms of priority and put that smart objective in there so you've yeah. got that timeliness that it that it can be measured that but it but it has a that it has a result centric perspective because yeah. then you can see the fruits of your fruits of your um of your labor absolutely and and i think there's nothing if you, if, if this if you know when this goes out and, and whoever's watch, watching this if you're a manager i will absolutely know that if you coach your team there's nothing more rewarding than seeing your team grow you know go back in back to your your wife's rose you know there's nothing no, there's nothing more rewarding for your your wife from seeing that that rose grow within your, oh. your garden and the other thing i would say if you're a manager is just ask yourself can you go on your lunch break can you attend a training course can you go home of an evening can you go to a meeting without your phone going off, messages coming through, emails coming through? You can't go on holiday, which I know, okay, none of us can at the moment. But yeah, if you're finding we... that you can't give up control, that you want to tell everybody what to do because you know your way works, or that's yeah, what, yeah. what you think. What's, what's the consequences to you as a, as a manager? Do you want to carry on not being able to go anywhere or do anything without constantly being bombarded with messages and phone calls from your team because a problem has arisen and they need you to fix it? Yeah, and I posted something on LinkedIn with those very questions today. Um, there was a, um, I, I do a daily, uh, I, I always put a, a, a LinkedIn out there and I, uh, one of the questions was, 
Um, can you go on the holidays and have total mm-hmm. trust in your team? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, what is your I succession planning yeah. looking like? What is your what is your um, what is your your team development? Um, and do you have does your team have faith in you? I'm bringing in that trust word again. Yeah. How empowered? And we you know looking at things around can um, um, that can your team do seventy percent of your job and all doing different mm-hmm. parts yeah, of it playing yeah, to their strengths. Yeah. So you bring in and you bring that elegant. Is it is it delegation or is it dumping? Yeah. Oh, so you've yeah, got that yeah. level of empowerment. Oh, which, we've all been dumped off. Oh, completely. <laughs> and, and I know we're gonna. You know, I think. Well, and I'm just thinking out loud on this because um, uh, for for everybody that's watches this, um, you and I pick a topic and we just run with it. There's no. We, we have just 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 run with it. Um, I mean, there's there's one thing I I, I do want to say before we end today because I know we we we've had a good gas. <laughs> <laughs> that's one way of putting it. But, I know we are both, um, you know, very much um, into sort of what Simon Sinek's approach is and what he talks about. And I know we're about the way. Yeah. Simon Sinek. Love and it. I know about his, his, you know, start with why. And it's a book that I've read several times. Um, but he also talks about um, leaders eat, eat last. And within that book, he talks about the circle of safety. Yeah. And for me, that's a big part of a coaching culture, that people need to feel safe, that they can make mistakes. If you're giving them empowerment to make decisions and to try a different approach to yours, you cannot create a coaching culture if people are fearful of of, having a repercussion of some way or being penalized because they've tried something with a positive intent, but it hasn't quite worked the way they wanted it to. Completely. And I think creating that circle of safety in terms of trusting and empowering, saying, do you know what? It's okay to make mistakes, but what have you learned from it? It'd be interesting to see, because we're going to bring today to a conclusion, but it'd be interesting to see what the feedback is off the back, whether it's off YouTube or whether it's off LinkedIn, because mm-hmm. I hope um, I hope managers, I hope people um, comment and, and give us some feedback on this because it'd be really, really interesting. And I and I and I'm I'm, I'm sensing that we could we could we could grow this, um, yeah, um, and we could certainly bring some people on board that are that are that are profile managers and and, and even um, take it another step further and yeah, and, absolutely. And, and getting them to comment on what we've just gone through. But also, Jack. also, you know, when we post this out there on social media. You know, we really encourage questions. You know, yes, we welcome feedback, but if you've got a burning question, if anything we've talked about today you can relate to, Completely, and yeah. you've got a burning question that you want to put to either of us, both, both of us, I think that's what we want to encourage with these as well. It's not just one, you know, us saying what we think, but our Welcome audience is participative as well. But if anybody's got anything that they disagree with or that they agree with or that they've got an anecdote that they'd like to share, because the irony about social media is that the message gets out to the wider audience and it's mm-hmm. and it doesn't have to a it doesn't have to cost anything per se, because you know, we live in a tumultuous time. These are unprecedented times where there's not a lot of money in the world anymore for the moment because um, you know, companies are, are centric today, mm-hmm. uh, Heathrow, just as just the name two huge companies then and they're going to be a, a lot of a lot of frightened people at the moment oh, so absolutely to, to make the most of what we've got but to utilize the the, the you know the things that are available jack yeah. listen I'm, I'm going to draw today to a conclusion yeah um, otherwise we're, we're, we're going to keep going <laughs> we were going to keep going and i think this is this is to to be continued because i'd like to pick this up and what i am going to say to uh, anybody that watches this either on youtube uh, on turnacorner.co.uk or wjhconsultancy.com. I'm trying to think of my own website. If you pick this up on YouTube or if you pick this up on LinkedIn, please give us some feedback. And if you want to join the next edition of this in terms of um, coaching, maybe session two, and it may be because we've got some guests coming up over the next mm-hmm. couple of weeks as well. Yeah, we're, we're welcoming uh, you know guests as well onto the show if anybody's in- interested. Yeah. Just one thing before we, we finish, when if anybody okay. is interested in developing their coaching skills, are you offering any courses on the subject, or is it included as part of any of your leadership programs that you may be running? I've got a, I've got two leadership programs run at the moment, um, and they're on Eventbrite, and I know you have as well. Yeah. Um, I've also what I've got is specifically on you know, change management in the digital world, so managing change, managing mm-hmm. uh, digital leadership, 
which has got an awful lot of coaching stuff in it because um, what we want is that level of inclusivity, which yeah. which we, which I know you and I are big, big, big fans of. Yeah, but I know you've got some coaching stuff on the go at the moment. I'm running some coach, introduction to coaching half day sessions throughout June and July. They're also on Eventbrite. But yeah, if anybody is interested, they they, they know where to find us. We're popping up everywhere, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Don't they just? Great. Okay, Jack, this is lovely to today. You. And you as well. Um, everybody, we will see you on the next edition of What's Occurring because um, we won't lie to you. <laughs> Love it. Have a fantastic rest, rest of the day, Wayne. <laughs>